Hey, welcome back to Alternative Small Holding. I'm Jazz, and today we are finally, finally going to talk seeds. the year we set some goals for our growing season we had just got our new growing space um, which was double the size of what we had last year and we wanted to set out some goals for the food that we're growing and how we're going to use it our main goal was to ensure that we were growing more of what we eat because although it's always good to experiment we found that there were certain things that we were dedicating a lot of space to before and then the things that we ate a lot of, we ended up having to go and buy them from the shops because we wasn't planting enough of them. Or Rue and the chickens got to them, or I didn't do planned succession zones. So this year I've been quite ruthless with what seeds I'm going to grow. There are still way too many seeds and there'll be way too many plants. We're going to give it a go though, we're going to grow as much as we can because there are some goals that we really want to achieve this year. So our goals are, number one, we want to grow for winter stores. We want to make sure that although we're eating a lot of fresh vegetables over the summer, we want to make sure that we've got a lot stored away so like in the pantry or freezer, made into sauces or pickles or whatever. Um, but we want to make sure that we've got good stocks for over the winter as well. As I said, we need to grow more of what we eat and by doing that we need to think more about succession planting and the videos on our monthly seed sowings are actually helping me because I am sitting down and actually thinking about what we need to do. Succession sowing isn't always my strong point, I always forget. Those videos are monthly what to sow and then monthly transplanting videos, they will be helping me this year and hopefully they'll be helping you as well. We want to grow more over winter and we want to fill in that hungry gap a bit more. We found that the um, we haven't really done winter growing massively in the past. We want to grow more things in the polytunnel over winter and I've got a great book by Charles Dowding about um, winter vegetables that I actually won in the competition from Hugh at Hugh's Nursery. I'm still reading it but I do want to sit down and talk to you more about that in the future. But it is a great book and it's really given us some ideas for what we can do for winter crops, so not just our typical brassicas, but winter lettuces and salads too. We want to experiment with new things, but also the most important thing is I refuse to buy vegetables this year. We're setting ourselves a challenge that if we don't grow it, we don't eat it. So we need to experiment and use the space properly, like use every inch of space, which is why we don't have big paths, it's why we don't have raised beds as such. We're using as much space as we can because I want to be as, self-sufficient or self-reliant on food as possible. So now that we've talked about our goals and why we've got this many seeds, um, then let's get into the actual seeds that we're going to grow. Now I have got hundreds of seeds. I really need to go to Seed Collectors Anonymous. I have issues, but they will be used. Some of them are from last year. Some of them are ones that we're just trying out. Some of them are ones that we just brought a stock of because they were in the sale and um, they will last a few years. If you look in our community post, there is actually a really handy little graphic that I put up which shows how long seeds typically store for, which I found really interesting and it makes me not feel as bad about the stocks that we have. I've grouped, I've got all my seeds out in front of me here, or some of them, and I've grouped them into sections such as root crops and salads and squashes, things like that. So we'll go through them all and I'll show you the things that I'm excited to grow in 2019. We will start with squashes and sweet corn. I group my squashes and sweet corn together because I grow them in the same bed together. So in my little, my little storage box, it's not a little storage box. In my storage box, I actually group everything together in terms of root crops and squashes and sweet corn because they will all go together basically. So one squash that we are definitely still growing again this year and I'm really happy with is winter um, squash called Festival. In fact, this is Festival. We've only got a couple of them left. To be honest, they're dotted around our house and they store really, really well. So we're definitely growing those again and we cut them open and then scoop out the seeds and just bake them like that. And they're so lovely. 
So the festival is a definite yes for next year, this year. Definite yes for this year. In the past I've grown a lot of squash and then realised that I don't like many of them. I don't like some things like the Hubbards with the big thick blue skin. Um, so we're growing more of what we like rather than just experimenting with squashes. I've done enough years of experimenting so this year we're doing what we like. Um, another one that I love is Curry Squash. Um, it's got a really nice chestnutty flavour which I absolutely adore when it's roasted. So we're using Curry. Also that's really nice and curry. We will be growing a typical pumpkin which is just Big Macs and we're only going to grow one or two plants and they will probably be dumped in the compost heap and left to get on with it. Um, but these are just going to be for Halloween carving basically. We don't really eat, you know, your, your typical pumpkins. We don't really eat those. I don't find them very full of flavour. I'm not a fan. So. Courgettes. This year I discovered that I'm not actually allergic to courgettes in the way that I thought I was. If we pick the courgettes as small baby courgettes, we grow them ourselves so they're not sprayed with all nasties, then I can eat them. Because it took years of finding out, going to hospital, blah, 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 to find out that I'm actually quite allergic to the stuff that is sprayed onto vegetables. And it was making me really ill. Rue is in the background. Um, she's been allowed to go on her computer and she is talking to her friend on there. So every now and then you'll probably get her singing or tapping away or just bursts of laughter. So, sorry. But you're used to that by now, aren't you? <laughs> Buttercup. Now, if you remember our videos from last year, we had a rogue squash that we thought was going to be a curry and then it looked like it may be a Turk's turban, but it ended up being a buttercup, which we didn't, so I hadn't had any buttercup seeds, but it was the most beautiful squash I've ever had. It smelt like melon when you cut it and then when you cooked it, the flavour, again like curry, was quite chestnutty and nutty, but just, if there's one squash that you're thinking, what shall I try, I would tr recommend buttercup or Burgess buttercup as it's also known. <coughs> and the last thing in the squash and sweet corns group is the sweet corn now we just use wilco's sweet corn uh, i want to try something like i think it's called bloody butcher the dark red sweet corn but um our growing space isn't big enough to give enough distance between our normal sweet corn and an experiment so we're just sticking with this but i think this year we'll probably have about 80 plants something like that it's a big bed anyway and it's been manured lovely and hopefully they'll do really well but we always i've tried things like different seed suppliers for sweet corn and to be honest wilco's ones all have always come out the best for me Coffee. what should we do next let's talk beans okay we love beans. Beans are a staple of our diet. We like them green as um, like dwarf beans or green like pole beans, runner beans. We eat them green as well and fresh. Our favourite dwarf bean is again a Wilco's one which is called Ferrari. Absolutely love them and I actually prefer to grow dwarf beans now over um, climbing beans or pole beans. I know they use up a lot of space but after experimenting with different climbing varieties, I just thought that the dwarf ones had more flavour. And at the end of the day, we eat so many of them. I thought, I'm just going to go with what we like and what we eat the most of. So we still, we will still be growing climbing beans, but nowhere near as many as dwarf beans. So, but we don't just grow, we don't just grow our beans for eating fresh. We leave over half of our beans, probably like 75% of our beans to go into dried beans so we can shell them and then we use them in casseroles and stews and curries and with pasta and we use them in virtually everything so we grow a lot of beans i'm really excited about these beans really sorry i just got, got really excited didn't i um red noodle bean a yard long red bean i've talked about it before and i'll probably talk about it a hundred times more but i am really excited to try this i don't know how it's going to taste but um I, I just I can't wait to see it growing on our bean arch which we'll be finishing soon um it, it's just just going to look stunning so I'm really excited for those red noodle beans Rue's favorite bean from last year was rock and core so that is a dwarf plant again but that it's got yellow waxy pods and she absolutely loved those we grew a couple just to test if we liked them and we did so we'll be growing lots more rock and core this year I love heritage and heirloom beans and 
So there's a website called Beans and Herbs, which I've told you about before, I'm pretty sure. Um, well, if you go to their unusual beans section, then they have a selection of old varieties that they are trying to bring back that people can grow or that have nearly been lost over time. And I have a few varieties from there. I'm really looking forward this year, I'm going to grow my two ones that I'm specifically trying are tunny beans or cowpeas and roof bible which is like a big fat lentil and is really nice for cooking in stews and that so i'm really looking forward to growing those i am going to do something um a small video at some point about how we are planning to grow plants to specifically save seed so not just what we're growing to eat but what we're planting separately to save seed but i'll tell you more about that in another video but that comes in um, quite important with these and also i won a competition on facebook a couple of weeks ago to get some um polish beans i can't remember what they're called i'll put the name on here but they're a rare variety of polish bean and i won some which made me so happy because i love beans so that's them something i wanted to try though now one thing that we eat a lot of like constantly is hummus it always comes in one of those annoying little plastic pots and now we do save them and we do reuse them but i would like to get away from this now vivi of what vivi did next grows chickpeas herself which is what hummus is made out of and she started them with some that she got from the gar um from the supermarket so i'm going to do an experiment i'll probably do this in the next day or so to see if these germinate and if they do then we will be growing some chickpeas this year the plans that we have about saying look we have things going on in the background that we're not telling you about yet they will decide how many chickpeas we can grow we can either grow a lot or just a few to try but um either way we're going to give it a go i really want to cut down on things that we're buying and i want to make more things ourselves and reduce our plastic use in that way so and reduce the preservatives as well for a start but yeah, I'm, I think we're going to yeah. try those. Yeah. Root vegetables. I'm going a bit overboard on carrots this year. Um, I haven't grown carrots really successfully for about 10 years. Rue has grown carrots successfully, but I personally haven't had great success. But this year we're going to crack it. That's it. I'm, I've had enough of playing around. We will be growing a lot of carrots. So. As well as your know, shop brought ones like um, these are Chantenay Red Core, which are a um, nice heirloom variety and quite small. We're growing those. But then we've got the fancy ones, which we love. So we've got a rainbow mix, and I'm not sure exactly which varieties are in there. Um, then we have. You're not a carrot. Go away. We have carrot. These are from More Veg. I absolutely adore More Veg for our heirloom varieties. I don't buy my seeds from any one place. I just buy what works for us and what we like from different places. Um, and More Veg do great um, heirloom varieties. So this is Atomic Red. So we've got a lot of those to grow. We've got Black Nebula, which I think is the darkest carrot that you can grow. And obviously the darker the colour or the more colour something's got, the healthier it is for you. So we'll be doing that. Um, we've got Sweet Candle F1 as well, which um, Terry always grows. And in fact, a lot of you always grow. And I've never got around to actually purchasing the seeds and growing it. So this year we're growing um, Sweet Candle. And there was another one, but I don't know where it's gone. But we're growing lots of carrots and multicolour carrots. That's the idea. Parsnips wise, we are doing Guernsey Demi Long this year, which is a short sweet full crowned one so rather than being a long parsnip it's quite dumpy um but big and i think they'll do us nicely beetroot wise we're doing what we always do so we'll always do boltardi but we are also trying um chico chicoa chicoa the stripy candy cane one like red and white so i'm trying that so i've never tried that before and then there's a variety an heirloom variety called crosby's egyptian which I'm looking forward to trying. Apparently it's like a deeper, like darker skin and a more earthy flavour. And I love the earthy flavour of beetroots. So we'll be growing those. And then we, I, up until last year, I did not like turnips. 
and then I was recommended to try a snowball and to literally harvest them and they're the size of like a golf ball rather than letting them get big and they were delicious so we'll be growing those and then I'm not kind of sure what category this fits into but one I'm really excited to try is okra and this is Clemson Spineless and apparently this is the best one to try if you are in a like a northern temperate climate so we'll be trying that lettuces and salads I'm bunching together because the one thing that we brought the most of that I didn't grow enough of last year was salad and that includes everything from spring onions cucumbers lettuces radishes all of that kind I just didn't grow enough of it and I can eat salad every day and one thing that I have never had much luck with growing was celery so after some research I found information on celery green sleeves f1 which is apparently a really nice variety for eating rather than using in stews and um dinners and recipes so green sleeves f1 celery i'm going to give that a go this year i'm really hoping that i get a celery that i can eat and just munch on because i don't want to be buying it and well i did set myself the challenge that if i don't grow it i can't eat it so um you better work <laughs> we'll be growing lots of varieties of lettuce there's too many for me to run down basically so cucumbers we have decided on armenian white yard long so they will be our main cucumber and then we will also think of telegraph and also those the cucumbers that we have started as part of our seed sowing experiment we'll see how they go if one of those survives or well not survives but if one of those lasts long enough before we put it outside without trying to flower and take over the house like a triffid then um, we'll grow one of those as well and then I have a thing for radishes I absolutely love radishes I absolutely love them so I've got lots of different varieties as well as your you know your French breakfast your scarlet globe and my white icicle which I grow and absolutely adore we also have Magala Malaga Violet watermelon radish which is white and it's got a pink ring and then it's green or green ring and then it's pink either way watermelon radish cannot wait to try those fakir which is a hot radish purple plum lady slipper which is a pink one i believe and zelta slatter um and that's a yellow radish so what I'm thinking of actually doing with my radishes is rather than sow like a row or a few of each ones, I'm actually probably going to put them all into one bag and then when I sow them I'll just pinch out and do a sowing of all of them mixed together so that whenever they're growing I've always got a selection of all the different types of radishes. So that's what I'm probably going to do with those. Brassicas. One that I really want to try is um, Neo de Toscana, so that's your like um, Carbonero kind of kale isn't it? I want to try that one because we've not done that before. We'll do our scarlet kale. We'll do much more of that because I, I prefer that now over the green kale. And then another one we're looking at trying is broccoli rab. So that's like tiny florets and apparently it grows really, really fast. And I'm looking forward to trying it. I'll do all of my other broccolis and cauliflowers and sprouting broccolis and that as well. Because especially with the focus on food for over winter to fill the hungry gap. But these are ones that I'm particularly looking forward to trying. This is exciting. We as a family um, are going on what we call a food journey at the moment and I've still got that video to put up. Um, but as part of that, we are growing a lot more Asian greens because we eat a lot of them. And I've grown pak choy twice. I think once the slugs got them and another time the chickens got them thanks to the little but we will be growing a lot of them this year so we've got a purple choy so choy some we have got that's lettuce what are you doing in here mustard leaves and we've got lots of mizuna and things as well we're growing amaranth so this is chinese amaranth the leaves are edible and when they set seed that's a grain like quinoa and you can actually eat the grain it's very good for you and it absorbs a lot of flavor and then standard pak choy as well. Uh, I've got loads of oriental leaves, so I'm going to mix them all together and grow lots more of those this year. Peppers wise, we're not growing any hot peppers this year because I found 
little big bags of chilies still in the freezer. And chilies frozen are great because they, you can chop them easier than you can chop a normal chilli. And they just, they last just fine. I might make some chilli jam out of some of them, but we don't use that many chilies, so I'm not that fussed, to be honest. I might grow one or two plants and some jalapenos or something. If I do, I've got to get them in now, but um, I'm not planning on it, really. We are growing more things like um, Sweet Marconi Red, and then there's a little one that I'm growing, which I don't have here because I've given the rest of the seeds away, called um, Pretty and Sweet. So you see that if you've seen the supermarkets now, you've seen them quite often, little peppers of this kind, like kind of size, which are lovely for putting in lunch boxes for the bee to do down for the little one. And um, they're just nice munchable peppers. So we're growing quite a few of those. We've got some standard California wonders and I've been trying to grow my Zulu and Violet Mist, but so far nothing's come up. I, every day I go and I talk to them. I have a little word and I say, come on, pick it. I don't want to know. And I can't get the seeds again in the, in the UK, so I'll have to do without if they don't grow. And then we're going to talk about flowers. So I love poppies, but I find if I purposefully sow poppies somewhere, they never grow. So what I do with poppies now is I just scatter some seeds around, usually from a seed head or something as it's germinate, as the seed head dries, I just break it up and chuck it around. Then I forget about it. And then as I'm disturbing the soil and turning them over, then they germinate. But if I specifically try and sow poppies or grow them in pots or anything, nothing happens. So that's my plan. I've got about 30 packs of poppy seeds. I'm just going to do them around the gardens and the front and the back and the side and up the allotment and anywhere I can. Lots of poppies. Um, in Pomia or Morning Glory. This is my favourite variety. It's um, Grandpa Ox, which is a purple with pink centre and it's got a white part in the centre that it looks, it is so vivid and bright. It honestly looks like it's either got a little like Christmas light in it or a little laser beam. It's absolutely amazing. It's an annual and it can be a bit tricky to germinate, but we'll be growing loads of those this year. Rue's favourite is teddy bear sunflowers so we'll be having those which are dwarf sunflowers but really fluffy more love lies beading than amaranth we'll be doing some red helianthus so red sunflowers i need to start my hollyhocks again because the chickens ate them out of the border so i'll be starting hollyhocks again so these are charters double mixed so that there'll be a couple of different colors in there as well and once we get all the garden kind of fenced off and we can plant them in there hopefully we'll have them for a few years to come Rudbeckia and this is cherry brandy um, I've sown the seeds for that they've come up the upstairs and then we'll be growing herbs that we use a lot of so we use a whole lot of cumin be dried um, seeds or ground we just use a lot so I, I can't cook without cumin you take my cumin away and I'm lost so we'll be growing cumin to um, save the seeds from I'm really looking forward to having our own supply of that. We grow meadow sweet, um, which is apparently really nice for using in wine, as well as having beautiful like white frothy flowers. And then we'll be growing loads and loads of um, coriander, and I've got a couple of varieties of coriander. So that is the majority of them. I do have all of these tomatoes, and I think there's about 60 packs in here. But we're going to talk tomatoes in another video because we'll be starting to sow them hopefully this weekend and I will film it and then I will show you what we're growing. So that was probably a very long-winded version of the varieties that I'm excited to grow this year. There is a lot, a lot of seeds, a lot of varieties, um, but with the growing space that we've got now, as well as the bit around the house, um, I think we're going to be okay. And if we're not, I can give them away. My mum really likes virtually everything that we're growing anyway and we're helping her convert to part of her garden over to a veg patch and then we've got the farm as well so no matter what they will be used or we can give them away. Often we give um, plants away outside our house. We put a little sign out saying free plants and people can collect them if we've got excess of anything. So yeah that's our seeds. The seeds that I am specifically excited for this year. So question for you. What are the seeds that you are really excited to grow this year? Let me know down in the comments below. So this has been Jazz from Alternative Small Holding. Thank you for watching and 
all of these seeds that we've been talking about, you'll be watching me sow and grow at some point. So um, here's to 2019 growing season and not buying any vegetables. Hopefully. <laughs> See you soon. Bye bye.